this week, we start with some good news. Kentucky has a new Democratic governor. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> Democrats just picked up a governorship in a state as red as Trump's face when he heard about this. Now, to be fair, this wasn't just any race. GOP Governor Matt Bevin was super unpopular. Even the GOP didn't like him. Just uh, was, was texting with a veteran Republican strategist in Kentucky who said the following, well, we found out that being an a-hole is slightly worse than being a liberal. Congrats, Democrats. You just figured out your new slogan. <laughs> Bevin fought the Medicaid expansion that Kentuckians needed and spent all his time making dumb Facebook videos of himself like this. <laughs> Weird choice, but that's how he announced he was cutting state education funds. When Kentucky's teachers went on strike, Bevin suggested that they were making students vulnerable to pedophiles. Here's what's crazy to me. You know how many hundreds of thousands of children today were left home alone? I guarantee you somewhere in Kentucky today a child was sexually assaulted that was left at home because there was nobody there to watch them. I guarantee you somewhere today a child was physically harmed or ingested poison because they were home alone. Wow, it's crazy that Kentucky didn't rally behind the guy that guaranteed their children would ingest poison. <laughs> However they try to spin it, this is still a hugely bad sign for the GOP. Trump fought hard for Bevin. He even held a rally for him on election eve where he said this. If you lose, they're gonna say Trump suffered the greatest defeat in the history of the world. This was the greatest. You can't let that happen to me. Turns out they can. <laughs> This is Trump's worst nightmare come true. I mean, his second worst nightmare after the one where he gets chased by stairs and salads. <laughs> Bevin hasn't conceded yet, despite being about 5,000 votes behind and the GOP basically giving him last rights. I mean, come on, Matt, exit with some class. You know, like, um, no, <laughs> not like that. Here's some more encouraging news. The Democrats took both chambers of the Virginia legislature last night. That is huge. They can now control redistricting and keep the GOP from drawing a bunny that gives them power for 10 more years. And they can also do something even more exciting. If Democrats can take control, they could consolidate power for the first time in 26 years and work with Governor Ralph Northam to enact legislation long blocked by Republicans. That would mean a significant shift in policy, especially on issues like gun control, protections against discrimination for the LGBT community, a higher minimum wage and passage of the Equal Rights Amendment. The Equal Rights Amendment? Holy shit! If Virginia ratifies the ERA, it would be the 38th state to do so, which is the threshold to add it to, I kid you not, the U.S. Constitution. Now, it's been almost 100 years since the ERA was introduced, and it would face a legal fight to be ratified, so let's not get ahead of ourselves. Uh, 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 I'm too late. I just came. I'm sorry. <laughs> A hundred years is a long time to think about baseball. <laughs> a lot of this good news for Democrats is due to voters in the suburbs where GOP support is cratering. Turns out suburban white ladies are starting to turn on the party of the guy who is facing two separate lawsuits from women this week who say he sexually assaulted them. <laughs> it would have been nice if they had turned on him when they first heard about it in 2016, but it's a start. <laughs> Keep it going, Megan, so you can do it. But wait. Weren't Democrats supposed to be doomed at the polls for impeaching the president? I mean, that's what I heard from incredibly correct man Chuck Todd. Turning now from the big news on impeachment to the politics of impeachment, which gets its first significant test with voters tonight. And it could bail out a couple of Republicans who were struggling a week ago. They should right. win it. They should win. Impeachment's the only reason they may right. not. But if the Republicans sweep these three red state gubernatorial races, two tonight and the, and the one... I think you're gonna have nothing but impeachment to thank. Once again, Chuck Todd's as wrong as his facial hair. It <laughs> appears that at least some GOP voters are as freaked out by Trump's shenanigans as the rest of us. In fact, these electoral victories came right on the heels of major news in the Ukraine story. Looks like Virginia and Kentucky weren't the only ones flipping yesterday. 
One of President Trump's most supportive witnesses in the impeachment inquiry has changed his testimony to confirm a quid pro quo with Ukraine. The ambassador to the European Union, Gordon Sondland, now tells lawmakers that the Trump administration held up military aid as it pushed Ukraine's government to investigate Democrats, including the Biden family. The former Trump donor updated his testimony this week with a three-page written statement saying his memory had been refreshed. Refreshed. <laughs> Did he drink a really good soda and think, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> obey your thirst and obey Congress. Sondland's testimony is very convincing, partly because of his central role, but mostly because his description of talking to Trump sounds incredibly accurate. He describes a phone call where he asked the president whether the White House was withholding military aid to get investigations. Sondland says Mr. Trump told him, I want no quid pro quo. I want the president of Ukraine to do the right thing. Sondland says, I wouldn't say he hung up on me, but it was almost like he hung up on me. Oh, yeah, he hung up on you. <laughs> At which point you said, oh, <laughs> thank you so much, Mr. President. See you next week. I love you. Oh, I blew it. <laughs> now, there's even more fun election news today. For the first time in almost 40 years, Democrats gained control of the city council of Mike Pence's hometown of Columbus, <laughs> Indiana. That's got to be rough for Pence. He was so distracted, he left his safety Bible at home. <laughs> what if his first string Bible touches a woman? Oh. The turning of tides is great news, though the pod that birthed Mike Pence still votes GOP. <laughs> oh, what, you think sex made Mike Pence? Think again. <laughs> And there was more schadenfreude in Virginia, where Julie Briskman, the woman who was fired for flipping off Trump's motorcade, beat a Republican incumbent to be elected to local office. She is cycling's greatest hero, next to Lance Armstrong. What? Oh, no, all of them? Oh. <laughs> And friend of the show, Danica Rome, who made history two years ago when she was the first openly transgender person to be elected to the Virginia State House, made history again last night when she was re-elected, becoming both the longest serving and first openly transgender individual to be re-elected in our nation's history. Look. <laughs> 2020 is still going to be a huge challenge, but it's nice to be reminded that people do give a shit. And aside from his core supporters, everyone is sick of Trump's shtick. It's time for him and his cult of followers to ride off into the sunset together. <laughs>